These are some of the component bits you need to build yourself a wind turbine mount. As you can see from the, the piece on the right, uh, one of my friends actually cut me the aluminium. It's 12mm aluminium. I've probably over-engineered it, but it's not a bad thing because uh, they've got to be strong. Uh, I've got two pieces to the mount. I've got a top mount, which is that bit. Okay, this piece here. And then I've also got another piece underneath. And basically what actually happens is something like that goes on there. Upside down, obviously. This has got to be welded because I can't do it any other way. And then what's going to happen is to actually minimise the amount of uh, vibration going through, I'm going to be putting bolts through like this. Bolts going through that way, through the, through at six points, through to the other piece, which will be the the uh, the bit on the top of the mount, the top of the tower, I should say. And between that, I'm got to screw. I'm got to put a, a piece of great big thick bit of rubber. Now the idea is to actually minimise the vibration going down the centre of the tube. So the less area there is touching the tube, the less vibration goes through. That's the theory, anyway. Uh, one of the other problems I've got I've come across is basically how to get the the power down the cable, uh, and I need a slip ring. Now I can't actually buy a slip ring anywhere; it don't seem to be. But there are plenty of automotive ones, and if you want 12 volt ones, I, f I actually figure that probably an alternator one is a good start because they're normally about 60 amps, and this is about a 60 amp turbine at 12 volts. My idea with this one is to actually to feed a very large tube down from the 50 millimeter pole up in the center of the turbine that'll be fixed on the pole on the 50 mil pole that'll protrude up through the center uh, stationary the wires will come at the top and the hopefully there'll be a bearing in the top there actually holding it firm because there'll be two bearings in the bottom anyway and the brush gear will sit sort of on the on the brush gear there, there and there. Hopefully, maybe at three, maybe four positions. I don't know. It depends on what rim I got. This uh, this sort of gives you an idea. These are the sort of bearings I'm actually using on the actual turbine mount. Two of them. I've got a 65 mil thick piece of aluminium being turned down by an engineer for me. He's going to make half of it 50 mil. And the other half will be the stat, the full full width height, so we can actually sink the bearings inside the actual tube. There'll be there'll be clips actually, so clips holding it in as well. I'll show you that when I actually get to it. Uh, this is my first attempt at a, a wind turbine mount uh, of steel, and it was actually going through into the 50 mil tube with some uh, sort of a uh, copper impregnated bushes. Not very good. Uh, what actually happened after so many months, the the welding which was done by a friend of mine started to snap. Uh, I don't know if you can just probably see it on the edge there. You might be able to just start to come away there. So it wasn't strong enough. And also uh, the the plate I used, which is too thin, was useless. So what I actually done at the time, I reinforced it with some brackets like this. Put them down like that. And that actually did the reinforcing. Okay, that gave it some extra strength. But to be honest, that was pretty crap. And uh, no, sorry about the language. But it's, you know, just one of those things. You, you live and learn these things. This is the wind generator, the, the turbine, the heart of the of the monster. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's a fairly sort of heavy thing. It's about 10 kilograms in weight. It's got three wire coming out, three phase, which I believe is AC, uh, it's, it then goes from there to a device like this, which is basically a rectifier setup, this is going to be condensed smaller and a lot smarter when it's finished in a new box, so this is just the old one, it did a trick, it's no problem, so I'm quite happy with it, but I'm going to re reuse them again. This is the blade set I've got. It's actually a design by Future Energy. Uh, I've got a front for it, as you can see on the front there. It's a proper hub. The blades are balanced. And I've actually just bought myself a front for it, just to make it look a bit neater, which is about 20 quid. It's, it's easier to buy, buy one than build one. Some people can build them. I can't. So I'd, I'd rather a professional do it. But these blades are extremely good. 
Uh, they're, they're sort of like a composite of something. And they're very tough. And they are very super quiet. This is the sort of cable I'm running from the bottom of the turbine to the actual battery bank. It's a fairly thick stuff. It's easily as sort of nearly as thick as my finger. Multi-strand. Capable of taking at least 60 amps. So you need some special cable. The thicker the cable, multi-strand, the less loss you're going to get in it. So a little trick if you want to learn to, to find out how many amp hours you've got in your batteries. Fully charge them up and stick one of these on them. Just put both elements, 100 watts on it and count the hours. And if you do your, do your maths on it, which I think you'll find if you use the uh, watts divided by the volts or times the volts, that will actually give you the amount of hours you can get out of your batteries. That's an easy way of doing a quick load test on your batteries. If you're going to use some clamps on, on the actual towers, buy the proper ones. Don't mess about. Get some real tough ones. They seem to last a lot longer and they're a lot stronger. All the bearings I'm using are metric bearings. Don't go to a shop and get them. Go on the internet and have a look on the net because the one, the little bearing on the left, they were about £2.50 plus a pound postage. And they're metric bearings, standard metric, I bet. And the ones on the right cost me about 12 13 quid, and they are some humongous ones. I, I could have got slightly larger than that, but I decided that, that fitted the actual aluminium lump I had to actually machine down. So, use bearings if possible, because they last a long while, and make sure you get some seals in them to keep the crap out of the actual bearings. This little video will be updated the next time I get to the next part of the actual mount. I've got to actually construct a slip ring in at first and check the design is all okay. But because this is like a one-off, it's going to take me a while to do. But I will, I guarantee, have it all up and running with its proper work and slip ring assembly in it. And once I've done that, then hopefully that will help some other people to build one as well. So, good luck all you wind turbine enthusiasts.